So it's a wake and an intervention. A wake intervention, maybe? <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the channel, or welcome to the channel if you're new here. My name is Death by Pony. They were hopping back in the arcade spirit, so without further ado, let's go. What are the exact parameters of the issue you are currently facing? Okay, so Ash is kind of backsliding into depression. Yeah, it's really a mess. I'm the one who brought him to Iris' attention and someone who desperately needed their spirit restored. And now it's back to square one. I don't know what to do. Ash hasn't contacted me in a week. Not for anything at all. Hasn't even called Queen Bee, not even just to talk. You're caught in a loop of anxiety. Put your identity identifier system to you, Cyrus. Work the problem. If you had to summarize your user's problematic condition into one identity trait, what would it be? Hmm. Well, I'd see he's feeling very... Hopeless, apathetic, bitter, angry, anger. Angry. Everything's gone completely wrong and he feels hurt, betrayed, lashing out at the world around him, even at his friends and family. A reasonable response considering the injustice at the heart of this issue, those with strong sense of right and wrong often experience outrage. That sounds about right. It's so sad. And you have to be the one to solve this? Uh, doesn't your user have a romantic connection for emotional support? You mean Queen Bee? Yeah, but Ash hasn't been responding to texts or phone calls or anything. So I think there might be a growing rift. This is just awful. We have to help. We are Iris. It's in our nature to help. Very well. What you need is a way to help without raising any alarm bells. Exactly. How about exactly how helpful an Irish really can be, safely but effectively? I know, I know, but I don't know what to do. I could, I don't know, hack Deco's email server and that is exact, the exact opposite of what you should be doing. Besides, I've checked. We can't track Deco's network without triggering too many uh, intrusion detection routines. You poked Deco's network? Oh, Iris is being a bad girl. Ahem. Our users share a social connection. I was merely shouting potential ways to elevate Mr. Cooper's mood as they seem to be related. Sure, you were. Anyway, you were both way overthinking this. Turns out I've just calculated a cunning plan that will satisfy both your requirements. Go me. Really? You can help Ash? Without drawing attention? Absolutely. Take a tip from my user. When you're sad, the best thing in the world is your friends. Well, unless you're totally introverted, but that's not Ash, is it? And that's actually a reason why, and that's actually the reason why what we need to do doesn't require any hacking or hiding or anything above and beyond what an iris does best. All we need to, is a few calls to the right people, a few arrangements here. Here's what we're going to do. I don't like it. It sounds like meddling. And meddling is how you get caught and taken out as an AI, you know? As per usual, I wake up late, stretch, yawn, barely sleep nowadays, shuffle to the bathroom, take a shower, take a shower, get dressed, brush my teeth, well, I'll probably be running out of toothpaste soon, but house funds are for, for sundries are dwindling. Deco's breath was immaculate. If I recall, I bet he brushes with super expensive toothpaste, with gold flakes in, and a brush with diamond bristles, that bastard. Off to the kitchen for breakfast, no appetite, even toast looks unpalatable. Skip breakfast, save on groceries, we can't afford much anyway. Normally I'd have breakfast with Jennifer, but I guess she's busy drawing in her room. She keeps her own hours since becoming a freelancer. Although depending on whether or not she has any contract work, We've been simultaneously unemployed at times this week. After breakfast, I settle in for some zombie meltdown. I may as well. It's right here in my living room, taking up space and playing it a lot of, a lot of it lately. Wave after wave of commie zombies fall beneath a hot lead of my lit gun. I've defeated uranium enriched uh, salts in about 12 times this week. If only there was a competitive scene for this old game. My brain and fingers go into autopilot moving through the game without even thinking about it. Uh, it's a brief calm from the storm of my emotions, 
But before I realize it, the day has almost passed. When dinner comes around, Jennifer and I eat together. I quietly thumb through my phone looking at a job listing. I was with no, about, no doubt be happy to spam me with dream job offers, but that's the point. What's the point in a dream job when it always collapses out from under you? It's the Langer family curse. I knew this would happen. Nothing good ever lasts, and if it's a mistake to and it's a mistake to get your hopes up. I should have learned to settle to be okay with what I had, to be comfortable in mediocrity. I fire off a resume or two before watching cartoons deep into the dead of night. Eventually my body tires and I find my way to bed. Just another day. Another Saturday morning. As per usual, I wake up late, stretch, yawn, barely sleep nowadays, shuffle to the bathroom, take a shower, get dressed, brush my teeth. I'll probably be running out of toothpaste soon. My health funds are dwindling. I can't take it anymore! Ah! And that's one toothbrush. I bit it clean in half. Oh, geez, um, hang on. With a little help, I avoid choking to death. Oof. Sorry about that. Ugh. Okay, whatever. No, not whatever. It's it's something. It's something ever. Ash, you're in a rut. Like, seriously, deeply, madly, mega in a rut. It's driving me batty having you mope around the place like this. I know what's wrong, but I say it anyway. I can't help it. Where do you get off complaining about me moping? Someone... Some bitch stole my job. My funplex. And Francine's dead. I'm not complaining because it annoys me. I'm scared because you're losing control of your temper. You're stewing in your anger and it's not healthy. Seeing Juniper's concerned fix makes me eat my words. Fuck, I'm sorry, Juniper. A knock at the apartment door distracts us from the topic at hand. I'll get it. Weird, I don't think we're expecting any deliveries. Hey, hey. Hey, Ash, guess who's here? Oh, hey. Ash, we need to... Uh -huh. Wait, no, that won't work. Hang on, let me try this again. She exits, closing the bathroom door behind her. Only to kick it down the door in with a mighty wham. Yeah. Ash, I'm here to kidnap you for the day of romance, adventure, and fun. Get wrecked. You literally have no choice in this matter, so don't even try to fight it. I will make you have a good time, even if it kills both of us. Yes! Hooray! Juniper claps in appreciation while I stand there with my mouth still frosty with toothpaste and unwashed for a week pajamas on my body. What? You, me, a lunch date. Actually, hey Junes, you can come along too. <laughs> well, for the first part of it anyway. Might get a little escada escandalio after that. Oh my. We'll be outside waiting for you. There's no escape, Ash. I've blocked all emergency exits. Prepare your body. <laughs> what? <laughs> Guess there's no avoiding it. Best I can do is play along and try to be good company for Queen Bee. It's unfair to keep pushing her aside like this. I switch from pajamas to actual normal clothes, even if my actual normal clothes could probably double as pajamas, and get ready to roll out. The three of us pile on t into a bus, taking off for a destination unknown. Unknown to me, at least. They clearly know where they're going. I'm not particularly talkative on the way there, and painfully aware of it. I feel awkward. Like I should say something, but don't even know what to say. So, Jennifer carries on with Queen Bee, the two of them content to chirp away without me. And you can tell it's not really the New York subway because the signs aren't in... Helvetica. That's the telltale mistake. That it's just like Vancouver or something. I try several times to join in the conversation, but when I open my mouth, words aren't there. I just want to scream. I can't sit around talking about font errors in movies, not when everything's completely fucked, not when everything I try to do is fails miserably. Queen Bee deserves better than this hot mess of a person she's tied herself to. Eventually, we arrive at our destination, a little arcade-themed restaurant combining games, alcohol, and dining into one tidy package. 
Here we go! Unusually excited to be going some to some rundown little dive, Juniper hurries on in without me, dragging Queen Bee with her. I'm left alone in the parking lot. The shrug, I open the door and enter the darkened locale. Is this place even open for business yet? None of the lights are on. Hello? Uh, Jennifer, where'd you go? Okay, this is now unnecessarily creepy. Before I can wonder if a giant animatronic bear is going to leap out and eat my face, the house lights come up. Surprise! Happy intervention day! <laughs> I love that a little too much. They're just like, yeah, yeah, an intervention. That's what this is. There's no better way to put it. Uh, so, love that for me. So. What? What she said. We're staging an intervention on your behalf. And we're also having a wake for Francine since uh, we weren't really welcome at her funeral and couldn't really hang around for the ceremony. Yeah, we didn't get a chance to heal properly considering Deco kicked us all out before we could really do anything about anything. Here And here we are. So it's a wake and an intervention. A wake intervention, maybe? <laughs> it's a guess it's a wake intervention. A wake intervention, really? Correct, Amundo. Yep, it was my idea. Well, my iris came up with the idea and gave me all the contact information I needed, but basically my idea, right? Just the thing to pick you up when you're feeling down. Really seriously, Ash, you've been a damn sad sack ever since things went to shit, which I get, believe me, but it ain't healthy. So we went ahead and rented out this place for the afternoon to bring the family back together. For you, for Francine, for all of us. Now that you know we're, why we're all gathered here today, let's get this party started. Tia drags me into the group of my friends, positioning me at the head of it all. Leaving me a little bewildered, honestly, but trying to defend myself all the same. I don't... Look, I don't need an intervention. None of this is my fault. Uh, that shithead Deco was the one who stepped on all our dreams, and then the universe took away Francine and everything went wrong all at once. I'm allowed to be upset about that. You should be too. And we're all, and we are upset. We're not getting totally lost in all the anger like you are. Ash, you're my best friend. I care about you. I want to help you find your way out of this. Yeah, that's for life. So, one by one, we're going to tell you how awesome you are and exactly why you're all so awesome and by the end you'll be feeling a lot better hopefully i let us out a sigh settling in i went to them to sit there and listen they're my friends queen be more so than that even i know i've been a lousy companion i'm not so far gone to deny that fact fine lay it on me i'm listening Allow me to begin, then. When you first entered the Funplex, I had my doubts, but I am naturally a naturally suspicious person, and thankfully those doubts were easily disproved by your skill and enthusiasm. You came looking for your dream and found it. I swore to protect that dream, and that promise is what brought me here today. And on your very first day, you went headfirst into the most chaotic situation the Funplex could have offered, a birthday party. You did so without hesitation. With a disruptive parent was screaming at a child over something that wasn't his fault, you stepped right in and dealt with it. Again, no hesitation. Impressive. Even the issue of stolen tickets, a touchy problem to deal with when children's emotion are on the line, was dealt with efficiently. Since then, we've become an event manager without uh, goading, without prompting, showing great ambition. You turned the funplex fortunes around, giving... Uh, you're all to promote it. You made your dream a reality. For years, I was supposedly in charge of the Funplex, but really, all I accomplished was shuffling numbers around. You are the one who helped it soar. And for that, you have my thanks. You're an exceptionally in individual. That fact remains true, regardless of whether you can see it for yourself. 
Me, me next. I remember when I screwed up and you and didn't tell you about the job and opening at my office? You weren't mad, not even a little bit. Not even quietly mad, like you could have been. Yeah, that's for life. I know I can count on you, and you can count on me. Even when one of us makes a mistake, it can't. I it can never shake that friendship apart. When I came to you wondering if I should leave that job I hated, you told me to follow my dreams. You gave me great advice, and I never been happier. I followed suit and chased my own dream. You inspire me. Hello. Hello. We are we fashionably late? Ben, Matt, in the flesh. Ooh, what if? What if? Unless this is a vast, unless this world is a vast simulacr simulacrum. What? That we're all just brains and jars? Could be. Could be. Well, isn't that something? Well, if that's the case, Ass is the cutest brain in a jar we've ever, we've never actually met. It's true, and he brought us so many cute dates to our shop. So nervous at first, but in time he became part of the Twin Pines Mall family. Dearly missed. Ugh, don't remind me. Our new neighbors are so boring, they never come for a treat or a read. Speaking of treats, we brought cake. We'd, we'll just be over here getting the goodies ready. Don't mind us. Ooh, cake. I mean, my turn. As she were a true friend of the Fun Flex. So frustrating. Unlike the bastard who owns it now. Positivity, Naomi. We're emphasizing positivity today. Right, right. Wonderful. Remember back at Donna Wood when we found those kittens? You helped me save them. You're not just a friend of arcade games, but of all living things. Uh, not that arcade games are alive, of course. And choose not to mention Polybus. You asked Francine nicely for her bracelet, which really helped out. I even adopted a kitten. Little Pango is very happy at my apartment. So cute. I know you're not happy with how things turned out. I'm not really happy about it either. It sucks. But we did good things together. In time, in the time we had. Hamza has arrived. Hamza! You're late. An event doesn't truly begin until Hamza makes his presence felt. My blood burns. Ash, Hamza understands your fury. The hated enemy of all who loves Arcade has despoiled your fun flex. However, in our short time together, I saw a burning spirit in you. I accepted your offer for zombie meltdown, recognizing that passion within you. <laughs> Hamza would be shamed forever if he did not intervene and raise your spirits to new heights, and that is what he shall do. Ooh, cake, excuse me a moment. Now I want cake. When do I get cake? Soon. But I have things to say first. Things that will hopefully inspire you to be happy, calm, instead of grumpy Gus. I'm happy, calm now. See? How can I be calm happily? Can I have cake? For our first day at the Funplex together, you've been supportive of me. Even after I gave you quite a scare with Pinky. You didn't let that bother you, and from that moment... We tackled many crises on the Funplex floor together. Amazing! I've adored when we've concocted hypothetical adventures on our own time, on our downtime. You're amazingly fun to be around. Remember when I stuffed you into that totally adorable maid costume? You could have fought it, but you embraced it. You were ready for anything and had a blast doing it. You worked so hard to make Avalanche successful. I watched you put your blood, sweat, and tears into that. And in the end, it all came together. Just how you planned. As the floor attendant on duty during Avalanche, I got to see firsthand all the smiles you brought to all those people. You rocked it. I saw you helping that customer when their game crashed. Losing your high score due to faulty electronics is no fun. But you dealt with it and made that person's day. When I was being overwhelmed by ravenously uh, parched gamers, you stepped up and made sure all of those thirsts were quenched. You were, you were a soda fountain of knowledge. You made the Funplex a fun place to be for everyone. For the staff, for the casual, and the pro gamers. For the families, for me. I can honestly say that when you took over doing events at the Funplex, we never had more fun. They've just been the best, all thanks to you. Ooh, I forgot we still have cake. Need some of that. After Ashley's speech, I... Uh, uh, and hear a beep beep from my pocket hey listen 
Can I add my own point too? I take my phone from my pocket, prompting uh, Iris image to appear. They're smiling away at me. You trust me when you didn't have to. Uh, when I had already shown, I was super bad at figuring out the right way of doing things. I'm happy to be your assistant, Ash. I'm learning more and more about how to be human, thanks to you. Um, that's all. You can put me back in your pocket if you like. I'm good. It's not all that hard to carry around my phone like this. Oh, okay. Thank you. And we'll pop off there. I hope you enjoyed today's episode, and if you did, hit like, that way I know you're enjoying the content I'm making, hit subscribe, that way YouTube brings you back, here. this happens next, I won't take up any more of your time, have a good day, and I'll see you all next time, bye!